here for week three. I really miss you and I kind of want to speak to you in the classroom and not through my screen. But now that we've dealt with calculating depreciation last week, our focus will be on recording depreciation in the general journal and posting it to the general ledger for this week. Okay, so we all know that depreciation is a year-end adjustment. Okay, in other words, we only record these transactions at the end of the financial year and the journal in which it will be recorded is the general journal. The debit leg of this transaction is an operating expense called depreciation. And the reason why depreciation is an expense for the business is because the cost of operating the asset is assigned to a specific financial year and then we'll set off this cost of using the asset in this financial year against the income of this year in the income statement. Okay, so what the business tries to do is it tries to spread out the cost of an asset over the time period that it's using that asset. Okay, so it writes off the cost as an expense a bit by bit in a couple of financial years that follow on each other so that the entire profit is not depleted the first year when you buy the asset, but that the profit is decreased a little bit every year by the cost of that asset. But this will make sense when we deal with financial statements. Now, something that's very important is that there's only one depreciation expense account for all of the depreciable assets. So if we depreciate vehicles, we debit depreciation. If we depreciate equipment, we debit depreciation. And this will make sense more towards the end of this video. Even though the asset loses its value, we cannot credit the asset account directly. Okay, so we know that we've got our debit as depreciation, but now we want to find the credit, and we know that assets decrease on the credit side. So our immediate um, response will be to go and credit the asset itself. Okay, go and credit vehicles or go and credit equipment because the asset loses value. But there's a very, very important principle that you have to remember in accounting, is, and that's the historical cost principle. And the historical cost principle says that assets must be recorded in the financial statements at their original value, not the market value that can be received when you sell it. Okay, so you can't go and credit the asset account because then when you balance it, the balance that you will bring down to the next financial year will not be the original value anymore. It will be a decreased value. In other words, more like a market value that you will get when you sell it. And that's not correct according to the Garth principles. So what we do is we create a new account called accumulated depreciation okay, for every asset. So there will be an accumulated depreciation account for vehicles and a separate accumulated depreciation account for equipment. Now, this account is a contra asset. Contra assets means it's the opposite of an asset or a negative asset. It's still in the balance sheet section. But in the financial statements, we will set off the value of this accumulated depreciation account against the value of the asset account in the notes. So we will show our owner how we're doing it so that we can still reflect the carrying value or the market value of the asset in the financial statements. It's not market value, I'm lying, book value. But we will get to that. Okay, so don't stress about that now. Just know that the credit leg is accumulated depreciation. Each depreciable asset has its own accumulated depreciation account. Okay, so like I said, there will be an accumulated depreciation account for vehicles and a separate accumulated depreciation account for equipment that you will credit every time. But the debit is still the same one depreciation expense account. You'll see in example two. Okay, so if we look at an example, 
It says Zizi Traders bought a vehicle for 200,000 Rand on the 1st of January 2019. The business provides for depreciation on vehicles at 25% per annum on the cost price method. Recorded depreciation on 31 December 2019. Okay, so basically at the end of the year. Now this is straightforward. We've got a vehicle with a cost price of 200,000 and our depreciation method is the cost price method at 25%. Now before we can go and debit and credit accounts, we first need to calculate depreciation. So that must be your step one. We've done this last week. Okay, so you know that it's cost price multiplied by the rate. In this case, it's 200,000 Rand multiplied by 25%. It's for the full year, so our depreciation is 50,000 Rand. Now, step two will be to record it in the general journal. I hope you can remember the general journal format looks like this. So we will issue a journal voucher on the last day of December 2019. The account that is debited is depreciation, which is an expense account in the nominal section. The value is 50,000 Rand. The account that is credited is accumulated depreciation on vehicles. You have to write on vehicles in there, not just accumulated depreciation. It's a balance sheet section account because it's a negative asset and the value is still 50,000 Rand. Okay, so remember. Just a quick general journal recap that the account debited must always be first. That's why depreciation is first. And then it's the account credited, but the account credited is slightly indented towards the right. Okay, so it doesn't touch that line. That's important. That's how you show which account is credited. And don't forget right at the end to give a general narration. You must be very thorough. You must say depreciation on vehicles at, you have to give the rate and you have to give the method. Okay, so 25% per annum cost price method. Now, if we take this to the general ledger, okay, this is our general ledger. Accumulated depreciation on vehicles is a balance sheet section account. It's a contra asset, so it's the opposite of an asset. That's why it increases on the credit side. Okay, and then depreciation is a nominal section account that's an expense which increases on the debit side. Okay, so if you take, we've already done the thinking work in the general journal, now we just post it. Okay, so we debited depreciation on the last day of the year. The contra account is accumulated depreciation on vehicles, and you have to write that out. Don't give me abbreviations, don't say ok, dip on the. That doesn't make sense at all. Accumulated depreciation on vehicles. Write small. In the general journal, 50,000 Rand, and then you credit accumulated depreciation on vehicles. The contra account is depreciation, general journal, 50,000 Rand. If it seems too easy, then you can relax because that's almost as difficult as it all gets. Example two says, on the 1st of March 2019, RT suppliers have the following opening balances. There's vehicles, accumulated depreciation on vehicles, which is a contra asset account. Okay, so this just means that we had the vehicles in the past, and so far, they lost 30,000 Rand of their value. There's also equipment in the business, and also an accumulated depreci depreciation on equipment account. It's very important that you see that We've got two separate accumulated depreciation accounts, one for vehicles, one for equipment. And these are our opening balances. Then it says on 28 February 2020, which is 12 months later, provision must be made for depreciation as follows. Okay, so vehicles, 20% per annum on the fixed installment method. Now, if you looked at last week's presentation, you'll see that's just a synonym for the cost price method. And equipment at 15% per annum on the diminishing balance method. Okay, so that's the one where you first have to calculate the carrying value. Okay, now before we can start recording this, okay, we've got to record two transactions, the depreciation for the vehicles at the end of the year and the depreciation for the equipment. But before we can start doing that, we must first go and calculate the depreciation for each. 
Okay, so I'll return to these values. Let's go vehicles first. Now, the depreciation for vehicles will be cost price multiplied by the rate multiplied by the amount of months. Why? Because it's the fixed installment or cost price method, so it's straightforward. The cost price was the vehicle's opening balance. Okay, so you don't look at accumulated depreciation, you just use the vehicle's opening balance. Multiplied by the 20%, okay, and it was for the full 12 months, so depreciation in vehicles was 30,000 Rand. Then, equipment was a bit different. It was the carrying value method or the diminishing balance method, so it's cost price minus accumulated depreciation, okay, which will give you 68,000 Rand. And then that 68,000 Rand is multiplied by the depreciation rate, okay, multiplied by the full 12 months, which gives you depreciation of 10,200 Rand. If you're not sure how to do these calculations, I would advise that you go back to last week's presentation and video and quiz okay or you can send mrs demelon a email so that she can help you now we have to go and read in the general journal okay so if you record it in the general journal that looks like this you will say journal voucher number one on the 28th depreciation is the debit in the nominal section but both of these transactions will debit depreciation. Okay? The credits of the transactions are just different accounts. So one will go to the credit side of accumulated depreciation on vehicles. The other one will go to the credit side of accumulated depreciation on equipment. But both of them will go to the same expense account depreciation because we only have this one expense account. Okay, so if you remember from the general journal that similar transactions transactions with a common debit or a common credit are recorded at the same time and on the same journal voucher. Okay, so we will record the total depreciation for both the vehicles and equipment in the same line. Okay, so depreciation will increase with 40,200 Rand. Why? Because accumulated depreciation on vehicles, which is the balance sheet account, increased with 30,000 Rand. And accumulated depreciation on equipment increased with 10,200 Rand. This is very, very, very important. Okay, so we split the two here. Okay, so we split them. Vehicles and equipment have their own line, but we add them together. So if we add these two credit values together, we get this one debit value for depreciation. It would have been wrong. If you had two journal vouchers, one for vehicles and one for equipment, that's wrong. Okay, so get used to this combined method. Okay, um, then now your narration will have to include the percentage and the method for both assets. So you will say depreciation on vehicles at 20% on cost price and equipment at 15% on diminishing balance. Okay, you have to write all of that out. Okay, now I just said, can you remember two transactions with the same debit are recorded simultaneously? That's why you only have one journal voucher. Yeah, yeah. Then, step three, you have to post the transactions to the general ledger. Okay, so now our general ledger looks like this. In our balance sheet section, we've got the two separate accumulated depreciation accounts, one for vehicles, one for equipment, both of them are contra assets. Okay, so it's the opposite of an asset, it increases on the credit side. It's not a liability, it's just the contra asset. Then we only have one depreciation account. An expense increases on the debit side. Now the interesting thing is we added them together in the general journal and now we split them again in the general ledger. Okay, so it's silly, it's nitty gritty. But that's very important. Don't get confused. Add them together in the general journal, split them in the ledger. So in the ledger, let's deal with vehicles first. It's February 2020, the 28th. Accumulated depreciation on vehicles, okay, in the general journal. That's the depreciation amount for vehicles. 
it's debited to depreciation and it will be credited to accumulated depreciation on vehicles. Then the equipment depreciation of 10,200 Rand will go to the debit side of depreciation and to the credit side of accumulated depreciation on equipment. Why do we split them in the general ledger? Because they've got different contra accounts. The one says vehicles and the one says equipment. That's why we split them here because it doesn't go to the same account. It goes to two separate accounts here. In the general journal, we just add them together because you can actually do that. That's allowed. But in the ledger, it's not allowed. Okay, so don't post them as one thing to the ledger because that will also be wrong. And boys, this is it. This is the most difficult that depreciation could get.